Policy Lesson 4, Part D, Electrical Power. In this lesson, we're going to be again dealing with the electrical power, but this time we're going to be focusing on the mathematics. So we're going to examine the maths modelling for electrical power. Again, remember, the mathematics is just a way of modelling what the actual physics is doing because we can't see, hear, touch, taste or smell electricity. We have to find some other way to model the phenomenon. So we're going to be uh, looking at uh, part of the textbook 4.5 Power and Ohm's Law and you can see there I've uh, put the Ohm's Law wheel on the screen and we're going to be looking at uh, the power equations and the Ohm's Law equations in detail and how we can uh, transpose between them in particular. So power and Ohm's law, there are three Ohm's law equations, and I'm sure by now you're starting to get these into your head. And the more we can get them into your head and get them automated, uh, the better it can be. Automated just means being able to do them without having to particularly think directly about them. So we've got three Ohm's law equations, R equals V divided by I, or voltage divided by current. If you want to make current the subject, I equals V divided by R, and finally V equals I times R. So they're the three basic Ohm's Law equations. We now have learnt about the three power equations, the first being power equals the voltage multiplied by the current. The voltage is going to be the power divided by the current and thirdly the current is the power divided by the voltage so the common factor here obviously is it's all about power in these last three equations so by putting these six equations together in different combinations gives us a set of equations that relate to the four quantities of power, voltage, current and resistance. So we'll end up with a total of 12 equations. So there'll be 12 equations and those 12 equations are what makes up that Ohm's Law wheel. So let's look at power from resistance and current. So if we know what uh, the resistance is and we know what the current is, power equals the current squared multiplied by the resistance. So how do we get to this equation? So we simply take the, I'll just get my pen turned on, take our standard power equation of P equals V times I. Then take our Ohm's Law equation. So this time we want to know what V is. So V in ordinary Ohm's Law is R times I. So V equals R times I. And you can see here, we're actually going to substitute that value in, in place of here. And the way we're going to do that is we do that here. This is the same equation as this one up here. All we've simply done is replace the V with I times R. So we've ended up with the equation P equals I times R times I. Obviously I times I is I squared. So when we simplify this equation, we end up with this one, and we end up with P equals I squared R, which is exactly the same as that, just written a little more neatly. Therefore, by combining the power equation and the voltage equation for Ohm's law, we can determine that power is equal to I squared R. So that's power from a resistance and a current perspective. 
simply by interposing the values that make up voltage. So here's an example. Find the power dissipated by a 10 ohm resistor with 3 amps of current going through it. So we've got resistance and we've got current. So nice and simply we now know that power equals I squared R. So we can take the current at 3 amps and square it and multiply it by 10. Of course 3 squared is 9 and 9 times 10 gives us 90. And of course power's units are watts. No answer is complete without the units. So we have 90 watts. So now current from power and resistance. So we start with power equals I squared R and we can transpose the equation to find it in terms of I. So this transposition is going to take a little bit more skill because we're transferring a squared across the equal sign so when we do that we need to take the square root of the opposite side. So I equals the square root of P divided by R. So how do we get to that, uh, that transposition? I'll just quickly do it for you. So just in case you didn't understand how we got there. So if we have our original equation, I'll just rewrite it over here. P equals I squared R. To get R on the opposite side, we simply divide both sides by R. So P divided by R equals I squared R divided by R. So I've just divided both sides by R. And of course, R on R equals 1. And anything multiplied by 1 is itself. So we can eliminate those. Particularly squared back. And we end up with that nice, neat power divided by R equals the current squared. Now to get rid of the squared, we need to take the square root of both sides. So we simply take the square root of this side and we take the square root of this side and the square and the square root cancel each other out. And we're simply left with I is equal to the square root of P on R. And that's the exact equation we've got here. So that's how we got to our final equation. So we can simply manipulate I is equal to the square root of P divided by R. So what about that resistance from power and current? Similar approach. In this particular case, we've got uh, R as the subject of the formula. So R is equal to P divided by the current squared. And again, quickly, I'll just show you the process of transposing the equation. So P equals I squared R is our original equation. And we want to make the R the subject of the formula. It's pretty easy. We just need to divide both sides of the equation by I squared. So divide this side by I squared divide this side by I squared. And again, I squared on I squared equals 1. So we can eliminate the two I squareds from over there. And we end up with P divided by I squared equals R, which is exactly the same equation that we have here. So now we're going to do power from the perspective of resistance and voltage. So can we determine 
power from having both resistance and voltage? Yes, we can. And the formula for that is the power equals V squared divided by R. So the way we get there is again, we just simply take the power equation, power equals voltage times the current. We know that in Ohm's law, the current, so we're going to be playing with the current component, is equal to V divided by R. So we take our power equation and we're going to substitute that value there, or that expression it's called, into there. And that's all we've done down here on this next line. We've simply taken that and put it into there. So power equals V times V divided by R. So we've got two V's on the top line and anything multiplied by itself is squared. So we end up with that final formula that P is equal to V squared divided by R. So again, we just simply used one of our Ohm's law equations up here, substituted it into a power equation and ended up with the power in terms of voltage and resistance, which is what we wanted. So now we know how we get power when we have resistance and we have voltage simply is power equals V squared divided by resistance. So a little example to get it in our heads, determine the power dissipated by a 120 ohm resistor when a voltage of 10 volts is applied. So the way we do that is we use our power equation, power equals V squared divided by R. So our V is 10 volts and our R is 120 ohms. So we're going to have 10 squared divided by 120. 10 squared is 100 and divide by 120. And we end up with 0 0.833 or we could have gone also and described it as 833 milliwatts would have also been acceptable. So what about transposing this equation now? What if we want to make resistance the subject of the formula? So to transfer, transpose, I should say, P equals V squared on R in terms of R, we get R is equal to V squared on P. And how did we get there? So we take our P equals V squared on R and to get R by itself we simply divide both sides of the equation by V squared so if we take our power equals V squared divided by R divided by V squared and put V squared over here. The two V squareds cancel each other out and we're left with power equals V squared equals one on R. So to get the one on R, we just have to invert both sides as long as we turn both sides upside down that works fine so we end up with v squared on p equals 
R. And that is the same equation as we have here. So that was the process of changing the subject of the formula to resistance. Voltage from power and resistance. So this time we we're going to we want the power. So it's going to be a little bit more funny. So volts equals the square root of power times resistance. And again, we're just transposing the equation is all we're doing. So power equals V squared divided by R. We want to get uh, the R by itself. So a quick way to get uh, the, sorry, get the vert volts by itself. So if we um, multiply both sides by R, we end up with P multiplied by R. So it gives PR equals V squared divided by R, multiplied by R, and the two R's on top of each other equal one, and they cancel each other out. So we end up with power and resistance is equal to the voltage squared, and now to get the square on the other side, we have to take the square root. So square root of all of that, that's P and R, is equal to V. And again, that's exactly the same equation as this one. So that's our equation wheel. So the four quantities, get my pen to come up. The four quantities that we're looking at are voltage, V, I for current, R for resistance, and P for power. So that's what the Ohm's law does, giving us 12 equations, and these are the 12 equations. We have three for voltage, three for resistance, the three for current, and three for power. So that makes up our Ohm's law equation wheel. And again, if you can learn how to uh, transpose those equations, it's very helpful. But if you can't, then uh, the equation sheet that's provided normally has that uh, Ohm's law wheel on it. So summing up, combining Ohm's law and the power equations gives nine equations that relate to power, voltage, current, and resistance. In other words, the Ohm's law wheel. If any two of the four quantities are known, then all the quantities can be then calculated. So any two quantities, and you can calculate the rest. So I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about the 12 ohms law equations, what they are, and how we can transpose between them. That's the end of lesson four, part D.